In the previous videos, we just learned how to use Keras functional APIs to create models and some specific properties of the Keras functional APIs. Now we come to this hands-on exercise, which is to build a very famous network that is WestNet for image classifications with the use of functional API. Let's go ahead and get started. Just a very quick recap, the Keras functional API is a way to create models that are much more flexible than the Keras sequential APIs or those models that cannot be handled with the use of sequential API. The functional API is much more flexible that can handle models with nonlinear topology, shared layers, and even multiple inputs or multiple outputs. As a reference here, you can see that this is, this is a typical shallow neural network that can be handled with the use of sequential API. And just say, for example, if we have the multiple inputs, multiple outputs, or even a compass graph topologies, in that case, uh, sequential API cannot handle these types of architecture. And in that case, we need to use the Keras functional API. And say, for example, for the multiple inputs, we have the test image, we have the input image, and then we go through different, different types of the layers, new network layers. Uh, one, say, for example, for the text, we go through a, a recurrent new network. And then for the image input, we go through a con convolutional neural network. And then we combine it, we merge it together and provide a output. And on the other hand, we also have uh, types of the multiple outputs. Say we want to have a, on one hand, we want to have a classifications. On the other hand, we want to have a regressions outputs. And finally, of course, we can also have even some kind of like a more compact graph topologies. And all these types of the models can only be handled with the use of Keras functional API. So the functional API make it much more easier for us to manipulate the nonlinear connectivities to topologies, which are the models with layers that are not connected uh, sequentially. Here is um, one is the hands-on exercise that we would like to go through. A common use case for this exercise for a West network WestNet is to use of a residual block. This is simply when the activation functions of the layer is fast forward to a deeper layers uh, with another path. This simple structures allow the training's much deeper neural network. And from this graph, you can see that this is a typical residual block. Here we have a traditional sequential path and at the same time, we have an additional route that can be used to fast forward to fast forward of these X inputs to a deeper neural network. And then these will allow us to have a much deeper neural network for predictions. Now let's build a WestNet model for some classifications. And so first thing first, we need to import the libraries that includes the tensorflow tensorflow carriers um, the layers and also the data set and of course we need, need to import the numpy for some calculations and also for the matplotlib for some visualizations so let's run this cell and then what we're going to do is to do a classifications for 10 classes so we have a data set that consists of 60,000 image in 10 classes with 6,000 image per classes. They are separated into training image and also testing image. And the class are completely, completely mutually exclusive. And here are the classes that we have. So say for example, label zero represent the airplanes and label one represents the automobile and so and so and these are the uh, are the 
uh, the look um, for the data set. And you can see that each image is a 32 by 32 pixel color image. And now let's load the data set. Because the image are in 28 by 28 uh, NumPy arrays with the pixel value ranging from 0 to 255, so this is a colored image. So we would like to normalize these pixel values to be between 0 and 1 um, for a much more easier training for smoothing the convergency. Now let's run this normalizations and we also would like to have a list to store their class name so we just set up the class name list so just like what we have here zero represent the airplane zero represent the airplane and one represent the automobiles and so and so now let's take a look on the shapes of the testing uh, training and also testing image just like what i mentioned before there is a 50 000 uh, training image and each of them is 32 by 32 by 3 uh, pixel and then we have the shapes of the training label that is uh, 50 000 and one which is a vector that is uh, corresponding to the training image Again, uh, similarly, we have the shapes of the testing image and also the shapes of the testing labels. And let's take a look on the label values. And the label value range from zero to line that corresponding to this list. And let's take a look on the pixel value. And the pixel value range from zero to one and here you can take a look on the image say for example this is the font this is a truck this is an other truck and so and so now we are ready to build the model of course we are going to use the functional apis to create the model and first thing first we need to use the keras input to capture the input and the input image is a 32 by 32 by 3, which is a colored image. And then there's two convolutional layers that we would like to capture the features. So um, for the first, for the inputs, we, we would like it to go through a convolutional to these layers with 32 neurons and with 3 by 3 kernels and with the use of the value attribution functions so we have these inputs we have these first convolutional 2d layers and then it will provide you an output x and then this output x will go through an other convolutional to these layers and the only difference is that for this one we have 64 new neurons and after the going through these two convolutional 2d's it will we will have a maximum pooling to these layers to done sampling um, these outputs so and then these outputs will go through this done sampling and just uh, return you a block one outputs now these block run outputs will go through the first we see your block remember that there will be two convolutional 2d layers and then these two value this block one value will have block one output value will go through two paths one is to go through a two stacked convolutional 2d layers and then at the same time it will just skip the traditional just skips the original route and fast forward to an other route and then it will just combine with the output from these convolutional to these layers and then go through these active active layers and provide you a block to output and then these block to outputs will go through another residual block and again these residual block are set up uh, uh, have, have two roots 
the first root is a two convolutional 2D layers, and then the second root is just um, a fast forward to skip these two convolutional uh, neural network, and then go to the add layers directly. So here you can see that we have the output that just um, that just um, went through this convolutional to these layers, and then we have the block two output that skip these two convolutional to these layers, and this is the second west uh, second residual block. And finally, once we have the block three outputs that is go through that have just gone through these two residual block, we will then just go through an other convolutional to these layers, and then we will go through an global average pulling to these layers to down samples the to down samples the the size, and then it will go through another dense layer and then drop out layers to make it much more, uh, to make the training better to avoid the overfitting. And finally, of course, it will go through a dense layer with 10 neurons to, um, to the corresponding, uh, to the corresponding 10 classes. And then finally, we also add the activation functions with the use of the softmax to provide the classifications. And of course, because this is a functional API, we uh we have we just have the inputs and we have the outputs and everything will be packaged with these carrots models, and we just name it as a toy Westnet model. And now let's run this cell and just take a look on the complete architecture. And here you can see that this is the input image and it will go through two convolutional to these layers and then one mass pulling layers and for down sampling and then it will go through the first residual block and then it will go through another residual block and finally it will go through some, um, one convolutional to these and a down sampling FH pullings to this layer, and then a dense layer and drop out. And finally, with the dense layers for the predictions. And now let's plot the models and take a look on these Westland. Just like what I mentioned, this is the input image. It will go through two convolutional 2D layers and then a maximum uh, pullings to these layers. And then it will go through the first block of the residual block, and then it will go through another residual block, and then it will go through few more layers, and before it provides the output. And finally, of course, we can compile the models. The optimizers that we choose to use is the atoms here, and the loss functions because this is a uh, this is a labels as integers that is um, 0, 1, 2 instead of the one hot representations. So we can use the smart categorical cost entropy. Remember that in the last layer, we already provide the, uh, the activation functions that is the soft mass. So in this case, we can set the from logis equals to false. And the metrics that we are using uh, is an accuracy. Now we can compile the models and train the models with the model.fit functions. And the input arguments are the training image, training labels, and with the 10 epoch. And the validation data are the testing image and their corresponding labels. And everything will return to a history, a, to a history object. Now let's run this cell for training. After 10 epoch, uh, you can see that the accuracy is up to 83%. This improvement is mainly due to the fact that uh, the Westnet is a deeper neural network. And with the use of residual block, it can help avoid the vanishing gradients problems even we have a deeper architecture. Now we can plot the 
results plus the accuracy and also validations accuracy uh, throughout the uh, 10 epoch and of course we can also evaluate the testing accuracy with the model stock evaluation functions with the input text image and also test labels and you can see that the test accuracy is up to 76 percent um, that is not too bad with only 10 epoch and of course with the training models we can use it to make some predictions let's say we want to predict 16 image and the correct predictions uh, label, uh, labels are blue and the incorrect predictions labels are red and the numbers indicate the confidence for that particular predicted label with only 10 epoch in terms of the training you can see that uh, most of the most of the image are predicted correctly and except for some of them are not predicted correctly so for example for this one this should be a shift but it predicts it as an arrow pane and on the, on the other hand for this one it should be a dog but uh, it predicted as a deer now let's um, use the uh, training models to um, to mix another predictions with a specific image say test image in says the 60, 60 image in this text image now we can grab this image from the test data set and here you can see that the image dog shaped is 32 by 32 by 3 remember that um carous models are optimized to make predictions on a batch so that we need to make these single image uh, as a batch like a branch so in that case we can expand one more dimensions at its left hand side in the very beginnings where you just expand an array with one just considers this batch have one sample only and then their image are ready to to be fed into the models for predictions now with the highest confidence is severance and the predicted class is a horse let's see if we predict it correctly excellent this is a horse and 100% that sure is a horse so the models predict these labels correctly and that's it for this course and hands-on exercise throughout the entire specializations course we covered new network and some advanced techniques for training and surfing and we also cover different types of new networks including the convolutional new network and recurrent new network and when and how to apply them finally we introduce the functional apis to handle and create much more complex architecture subjects in data scientists are evolving rapidly i hope this deep learning specializations course can provide you a solid foundation and knowledge to advance your career and continue your journey. Finally, if there are any questions or problems, please don't hesitate to drop me a comment. I will try my best to help. Hope to see you again in my future videos. Bye-bye.